Hi, and welcome to this tutorial. Today, we'll show you how to use true displacement to modify physical geometry to create realistic surface relief. It's important to note that enabling true displacement increases memory usage and overall hardware load. Please avoid excessive application within a single scene. Before we begin, let's first check the current state of the model. In everyday workflows, it's common to run into texture and UV-related issues. These typically fall into two cases. First, the model has well-prepared UVs from the modeling software. After importing it into D5 and applying materials, little additional adjustment is required. Second, the model comes in with messy or inconsistent UVs. In this situation, you'll need to enable triplanar mapping in D5 to ensure the texture scale looks correct. Similarly, when working with true displacement, it's important to identify which scenario you're dealing with before moving forward. Using this model as an example, when the geometry has neat UV, the brick material displays with correct direction and scale. In this case, you can enable true displacement directly without turning on triplanar mapping. However, when the model's UV is inconsistent, the same geometry can look messy. Applying a rock material in this case may result in distorted textures. The fix is simple. After enabling true displacement, Turn on triplanar mapping and adjust the UV scale as needed. In short, triplanar mapping is the go to solution for quickly resolving UV issues in your models. Now that we've covered how UV affects your model, let's move on to the other features of true displacement. Back to this model before using true displacement. Make sure the material template is set to displacement. Then, load a black and white map into the height map slot. Once that's done, click the button on the right to open the advanced panel and enable true displacement. After turning it on, you'll see several new parameters appear. Subdivision level controls the mesh density of the model. You can switch between different display modes using Alt, and one, two, or three. Press Alt and two to enter wireframe view, where you can clearly see the current mesh density. When the mesh density is low, increasing the height value will still deform the model, but the level of detail will be limited and the result may look rough. In this case, switch back to wireframe view and gradually increase the subdivision level to add more geometry. Once the mesh density is higher, Increasing the height again will produce a much more refined and detailed displacement effect. Beyond the UV issues we mentioned earlier, there's another important factor to watch for. Whether the model's mesh topology is evenly distributed. Using this model as an example, both versions look the same at first glance. In wireframe view, however, the difference is clear. The left model has uneven topology, while the right one is clean and evenly distributed. Uneven meshes often produce poor or unstable displacement results, a common issue in architectural models. So how can we address this issue directly in D5? Simply increasing the subdivision level isn't enough. It adds geometry, but doesn't correct the topology. Instead, click the Remesh button on the right to quickly rebuild the mesh into an even structure. Once remeshed, you can increase the subdivision level to add detail. Now, raising the height value will produce clean, accurate displacement. To sum up, if the mesh is already even, you can skip remesh. If not, enabling it is the fastest way to resolve the issue. Vertical offset controls the overall offset of the model surface. In this scene, increasing the displacement height makes the model appear to expand outward. To balance this, we can adjust the vertical offset to pull the model slightly inward, bringing it closer to its original volume. Likewise, in this pathway example, increasing the height of the road material causes the surface to shift from its original position. A quick adjustment to the vertical offset brings the road back into place, 
Maintain continuity is designed to address two common issues. It keeps displacement continuous across hard edges and sharp corners. It maintains continuity along UV seams. Let's take this model as an example. Displacement works by moving the surface along the direction of each face's normal. As a result, edges or corners that haven't been beveled can develop visible cracks when the height value is increased. In this case, simply enabling maintain continuity will fix the issue. The second case is UV seams. When you apply a texture to a cylindrical object, a seam is unavoidable. If the texture isn't fully seamless, or if the tiling doesn't line up to whole numbers, you may start to see visible gaps along that seam. Once you increase the displacement height, those gaps can become even more obvious. In situations like this, simply turning on maintain continuity will quickly smooth everything out. Simply stated, when your model has issues such as incorrect UVs, messy topology, or sharp, unbeveled edges, we recommend the following workflow when using displacement material in D5. Start by applying the material and enabling true displacement. If the UV doesn't look right, turn on triplanar mapping and adjust the texture scale as needed. If the model has sharp edges, enable round corner and adjust the radius to simulate a beveled look. For uneven mesh topology, click Remesh, then switch to Wireframe View and increase the subdivision level as needed. Next, adjust the height value to achieve the desired surface relief, and fine-tune the vertical offset to minimize gaps. Finally, enable Maintain Continuity to ensure clean and seamless results. While D5's True Displacement offers solutions for many edge cases, the best results still come from well-prepared models. That completes our tutorial. Welcome to try out True Displacement in D5 and share your creations with us. Thanks for watching.